If a workbook has lots of sheets, it can be tricky to find the exact one that you're looking for. So we'll see a couple of ways that you can make navigation easier. In this workbook, there are 18 sheets. It's got data validation examples. And the first ones are for multiple selections that go into separate rows or columns, and then some that go into the same cell. At the end, there are some admin sheets. So there are three basic groups of sheets. To move around, I can use these navigation arrows. I can just click if I want to scroll across and look for a sheet that way. But it can take some time, especially if you're looking for a sheet that's toward the end of the file. And you can click back the other way. A quicker way is to right click here. That opens up a window with a list of all the sheets. And you can double click on one and go to that immediately. To go back to the first sheet, I would just double click on it. To visually help people find sheets, you can use the tab color and put them into groups. So if I want to group all of these first sheets that put things into separate rows or columns, I'd click on the first one, press shift and click on the last one in that group. And then to color them, I'll just move that up a bit, right click, point to tab color, and click on the color that you'd like. For the next group, I'll do the same thing. Just click on the first sheet, and then I'll scroll across to see the last one. Shift click on that, and pick a tab color. And for the final group, you can do the same thing, or just leave those in their original color. So now we have our three groups. I'm going back to the beginning. So that makes it easier. If someone knows they're looking for one of these sheets, they just go to the blue section rather than reading every tab as it goes across. I'll go back to the beginning. And another thing you can do to separate these groups is to add a spacer tab. And I got this tip from Alex J. And there are other of his sample files on my website. And he inserts a spacer tab between the groups. And it has a couple of benefits and I'll show you that. So I'm going to click on the last sheet in this group. And to insert a sheet, I'll click this new sheet button. It puts in a sheet with a default name with a number. To rename that, I'm going to double click. And I don't want a name to show here, so I'm going to just type a space character. Press Enter. So now I have a little space between them. And I'll do the same thing at the end of the blue group. And it's easy to find now that I have colors. I'll just click on that last sheet to select it. Insert a new sheet as a spacer. Double click. Now I have to use a unique name. So for this one, I'll put two spaces. Press Enter. So now we have some visual separation, even more between the groups. Another benefit of doing this is if I go back to my list, I'll right click. And now in my list, the sheets have separation between the groups. So it has that extra benefit if you're looking through this list. And if you're concerned about anyone clicking on these sheets and getting confused, you could click on a cell here and type a message or put a hyperlink back to one of the first sheets. If you're doing any programming with a workbook like this and you go to Developer Visual Basic, you'll see all the sheets in this workbook. And here are the two that we created with blank tabs. You could name those so they go to the bottom of the list and you don't see them in this existing list. And to rename them, I would select one of the sheets and down here in the code name, I would type something that would put that at the end. So if you start with a Z space, call that one 01. And now it goes to the end. So you could do that for all of your spacer tabs. I wouldn't put more than two or three because each one is going to be a little wider than the previous one. You've got to add unique names, but it's a good tip. If you've got a big workbook, lots of sheets, and you want to help people navigate through all the sheets. For more Excel tips and tutorials, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.